no leaky transmission or or tire i can't tell you how happy that makes me it dumb as it sounds it's just it just makes me happy but what makes me sad is we're not taking any more trips this year because today is going to be the last above freezing day for a while i think probably till next march april so we're going to winterize the camper today also in store, which is pretty exciting because we've been waiting so long. We're gonna have uh, trenchers come put uh, some underground cables so that we can get Wi-Fi to the metal shop. And they arrived and they're actually gonna do that today. And they're also going to run a gas line to my one, another one of my outbuildings that I'm going to have insulated and heated down the road. But as long as they're trenching, we thought we'd go ahead and have them come out and trench a new gas line to the, to the pole barn. It used to be where we kept our goats, but we've decided to make it into a storage area and we're going to use it for uh, He, uh, additional storage, you know, but we're going to heat it in case we want to do other things with it. Also, this this well, it has a hole in it. This is our hand pump well. We call it our prepper well because you can pump water out of the ground, fresh, clean, very clean water. Any time of the day, any time of the week, any time of the year, no matter the weather. And it's endless supply. And that's the reason we put it in in the first place, was to have a endless water supply. But it's broke now, so they're supposed to come fix that today. And we've been waiting a very long time to have these things done. These companies are so busy that do this sort of thing, that you really have to be your own advocate and kind of, you know, you hate to bug them and bug them and bug them, but you want to get the work done too. And here, there is so much work for these kinds, kinds of services. These, these people are so busy, just cut, you know, and they, it's hard to find help. They can't get any help. And so, you know, they're working their weekends, they're working extended hours. I mean, they're making a lot of money, but it ain't like they're not earning it, they're earning it. So we're kind of, you know, we've been waiting over a year. So we're kind of like squeaky wheel in it, I guess you'd call it, squeaky wheel in it. But we got results and, and they, they showed up and they're gonna hopefully get, get things done and we're gonna get everything done today to prepare for the future. It's, it's kind of nice to get things done before the whole country falls to apart, let's just say. Okay, so we're going to get the camper winterized and, uh, and I'll show you uh, the progress we're making on the trenching.
Well done. It didn't take them long at all, and they even had a boo-boo. They even severed one of my uh, gas lines that goes from the corner of the house here all the way around the property and all the way up there to the tractor barn. Broke it right in half. But I got really lucky because even though they severed it, they knew how to fix it, and they just happened to have a fix-it part, which they say is kind of unusual for them. So I was like, oh, thank goodness, because the gas line led uh, to the tractor barn where we keep a lot of uh, consumables, let's just say, you know, food and water, things like that, that we leave out there. So they got it fixed right away. And they did a good job. What they basically did is they come to the, from the back of the house here, which is gonna go inside of uh, my utility room. They're gonna hook it through one of these, I assume. Four more security cameras to the outbuildings and Wi-Fi to the metal shop. So you can hardly even see where they trenched. Which is nice, which is real nice. So we'll come right in here, underground. It's all two feet underground, every bit of it's two feet underground. And they'll tap into uh, the metal shop here Right on the corner or up here somewhere. And I'll have Wi-Fi all winter long. That'll be nice. That'll, that'll really be nice. And like I said, while they were at it, because it's, you know, it's hard to get people to come out because they're, they're like I said, they're just understaffed and they're overworked. So I figure, you know, while they're at it, that building right there is an old, our old goat barn. And like I said, I wanted to heat it for future, you know, future use. And so they're gonna tap into the gas line in the back of the metal shop here. And they trench two feet under all the way over to this barn here. here. So that'll be ready to tap into in the future. We won't have to deal with that. So when I get this barn insulated, concrete poured, and a new door put on the front of it, we can just add the heater. I already have the heater. So yeah, it's all good. Now it's time to winterize the camper. The weather here has been changing day to day, week to week. Every morning I, I wake up, I, I check the AccuWeather app. And like yesterday, it said it was going to be below freezing for the rest of the month at night, like in the 20s. And today it was like, above freezing for two of the three days, the next three days, and then it changed, it just changes every day. So I don't want to take a chance of leaving water in these lines while it sits out here and then freezing up. So I'm just going to go ahead and winterize it. And hopefully it'll be easy enough to unwinterize if things change, but I doubt things will change, so. The former owner of this rig, he told me, now what he did was he would get up in the, the water fill area in the back of this, in the side of this camper here, and he would, said he would pour eight to 10 gallons of, you know,
this stuff, this antifreeze in the lines. So you just pour it down there and use the, uh, the pump to pump water into the hot water heater and through the lines. I, I, I can't believe that was the way to do it. I couldn't believe that was the way to do it, but that's the way he did it. He'd buy eight to 10 gallons of this stuff and just dump it down to fill. And he, you know, when I, when I first got the camper, I unhooked the, the plug to the uh, water heater drain and that's this all you, you saw. I made a video about it. All this stuff just poured out of it. Hey, someone's calling. I usually take my phone uh, I usually don't answer my phone to uh, unrecognizable calls. I, I push that little button in my iPhone to uh, silence those calls. But whenever I'm expecting calls for trenchers and well people and things that are other companies that are unrecognizable, I have to take that feature off. And so I, it's, it's like these shysters know when my phone I'm gonna answer my phone and that's when they call anyway I where was I I looked online and on YouTube and I think I found found an alternative method to uh, winterize this camper with less than a gallon of this RV fluid Okay, under the sink, this is what got me to thinking. There's a, a valve on the hot water heater right there. See it? So that, in my eyes, had to be the hot water heater bypass valve. So... Just turn that up, and that should bypass the hot water heater. Now I'm going to go outside and open it up just to make sure. For storage, I take the, uh, the rod out, and I put a, a plastic cap on here. You know, just to keep the bugs out and stuff. So we'll just keep that off for now and make sure we're not getting any antifreeze coming through the hot water heater. Now right next to the sink here is a little storage compartment. Let me show you. I have to take this out. And there's this little tray here. It's like a little tool tray or a storage tray. That needs to come out. like this and down here is a tube and it also has a uh, a valve right there so, you know, I'm kind of guessing right now, but it looks like that valve is turned off and I would have to turn. Let me show you if you can see. I don't know if you can see. Now, there's this tube. It's here for a reason, okay? It's connected. There's a little valve right here. One says S, one says W. So, I assume this just shuts off this. So, this, water doesn't come pouring out of this valve when you're running things. So let's just turn that this way, and I have to I have to guess that this is now active, and if I put the this down in the antifreeze bottle and turn the pump on along with the water spigot, it should, in theory, pump antifreeze out of the bucket and through the lines. So let's give it a go. 
Now I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. Like I said, I did watch a uh, YouTube video from the manufacturer on how to do this. But mine looks to be a little bit different than that, so I'm hoping that this works. And it should! Okay, so we'll just take this, stick the line down in here, and now we'll turn the pump on. Yeah, success. See that? All right. Let's try cold. Okay. Oh, it's using it up fast. So it did bypass the hot water heater. Let's go into the... Okay, in the bathroom. Pink. Pink. Okay. Sweet. Okay, I just added a little more antifreeze. So we're we're still less than a gallon. This is the outdoor shower, auxiliary shower. Okay, pink, cold. Good, pink. Okay, that's good. We'll go ahead and put the plastic cap back in the hot water heater now that we know we don't need to use it. Close that up. And there should only be one more step to go. And that Here. And inside here are two valves. That's the water drain valve down here. Now that shouldn't have anything to do. That drains the water tank. So that shouldn't have anything to do with winterizing it. But these two should. So we'll just turn these two valves until we see pink coming out. We'll start with the far back one here. Okay, yeah, pink. Key's all wet. Let's do uh, this one here now. Not to worry, it's the non-toxic antifreeze. It doesn't hurt people or plants, allegedly. And so, that should be it. And because we got a little left over, we'll just pour, pour some in the traps. It's got a little bit left over, just to make sure.
think it's a good idea probably to leave refrigerator doors open just make sure you didn't accidentally turn it on And that's how you do that. That's how you winterize a, night, a 2013 Arctic Fox 990 truck camper. It went pretty quickly, I think. And it, it's pretty easy. So let's winterize the garden well. Okay. First thing I need to do is come in and find the breaker for the well and turn it off BAM for the year okay and over here next to one of our three gardens we have a well tank I winterize my outdoor well, probably different than anybody else, but it's the way I do it because it works for me and it was cheaper. And quite honestly, I don't know if anybody even thought about it before, so let me show you how I do it. On my well, usually on these outdoor wells like this, now I built this well house for it. It's just a basically a lean-to that I put together with some scrap lumber, which works well. Just got to keep the sun off of it. Now, most of these outdoor wells like this in the North Country usually come with little drains down here that you could just leave these things outside all winter long and just drain them from down here and stuff like that from the pipe. But those were like $100 more. So I thought, I thought to myself, well, it doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, you just undo a screw down at the pipe and drain it. Why can't you just unscrew it here and take it in? And just take the whole tank inside. Right? And the supply company I bought this from was like, well, I guess you could do that. Like, they'd never heard of that before. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing. I just unscrew the tank, take it in every year. Save a hundred bucks. And it's still peace of mind, right? So I just get a, a regular wrench. And just hold on to it and... Just, just unscrew it like that. And I leave these valves open. Not like it's heavy or anything when it's empty. And then what I do is I just carry it out here into this heated tractor barn. I clear a little area on the table. And that's where it'll sit till next spring. Genius, huh? And then I come back out here to where the well once was with 
an old Menards bag, and some duct tape. And I kind of learned it's important to do this because of critters. You know, we live in North Country. Critters, mice, whatever, they build nests and all this stuff. So it's best just to take a bag, go over everything, tie it up best you can, and then duct tape it down. It's worked for me year in and year out. And that's that. See you in the spring. What I'll do Lastly, as far as winterizing my adventure mobile is, put a bunch of mouse traps around. I'll, I'll, I'll put uh, some traps, just the small ones, like this. I'll put them inside the engine compartment, two or three of them, and inside the cab of the truck, two or three of them. Because Mice are cute and all, but they're not your friend. They will tear up your wiring and they'll get it, you know, they'll find a way to get warm. Or they'll be looking even now for places to go in the winter. So yeah, these are just a few things I've learned over the years and that's what I'm gonna do now. And I guess I'll go ahead and close this video out because it may, you know, the well company may or may not show you know it, it's one of those things that they say yeah we'll be there tuesday and two weeks past you call them again and they say yeah well you know an emergency came up or that you know and i don't i don't doubt that's what happened you know they like i said are so busy this is such a small job and there's so many big jobs out there so i have to be patient and just be a squeaky wheel and hope they show up to fix my little hand pump well. So maybe that'll be on the next video. I'll see you guys all later.